Hello, you guys. Welcome back to another video at Tay Live. Hello, y'all. So today, I hope it's not too loud because I'm sitting outside watching my little guy. But I wanted to start this video today. So, y'all, I'm just going to be talking about HS, y'all. So, if y'all don't know what HS is, I'm going to tell y'all. I see a lot of people um, saying a lot of different things throughout social media and just in life general. A lot of people don't know what HS is, so they tend to say things. So they tend to say things that's um that's inappropriate to a, a lot to everyone who's dealing with HS. And so HS is hydronitis sufativa. So um, I'm just gonna try to start from the beginning and just uh, put in um, some of the things I hear, putting the answer to them, so people can really know what it is and what it means. So a lot of people feel like that HS is not a chronic disease, and it is. Um, some people feel like that is not like threatening, it is. Uh, a lot of people feel like that they don't really need to talk about it because it's just not that talk about, but it really is. HS is a cousin to lupus. Lupus is the cousin to MS. All those together is cousins. I would say they're more like first cousins, okay? So, they really close in relatives about everything that goes on. HS um, may look like lupus. Okay, so I'm going to start with my daughter. My daughter has been battling HS since she was 13 years old. Um, what happened was, my sister got lupus as a teenager. She had found out she was diagnosed with lupus. Um, I can't remember the exact age, but she had been battling it for now for about 20 years. So, um, we was going to her doctor's appointments with her all the time and stuff. So her dermatologist was like, is this your niece? And she was like, yes. And she was like, this is my sister. And she was like, oh, okay. She, so the doctor was like, so your sister don't have lupus or anything. And she was like, no, you, do you want to get your daughter tested to see if she carrying um, the gene? So I was like, sure. You know, I didn't have a thought in my mind or anything that anything that my daughter will, will carry the lupus gene. So he gave, he did the blood work and everything. And I really wasn't worried about it because I'm like, you know, like, no, you know, my sister was just unfortunately end up having it. I don't think my daughter is a carrier or anything like that. So, like I said, I really wasn't worried about it. So, um, so then a few weeks later, my sister had to go back for her appointment and he came in and he had the papers and everything. And he had the blood work. So he was like, your daughter, I said, yes. At the time, my daughter was like seven, eight years old. And so he said, we did the blood work and it comes back that your daughter is carrying it. And I was like, I was so shocked, y'all. Like my mouth dropped open and I couldn't talk. Like the whole time he was just talking, you know how you just hear something, but you don't hear it. So it's like, wow, 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 wow. Like the whole time he was talking, like my brain had completely shut out. And I was just like, what in the world did he just say? And so he was like, so he was like, it could um present itself when she turned a teenager. He was like, oh, it can wait. He was like, or it may not even come out. He was like, it can just like lay dormant. He was like, and not come out. So I said, okay. So I went home with that information and I was really worried. I'm like, okay, maybe it's not going to come out. I'm like, maybe she just carrying it. It's not going to come out. And so after a while, you know, it was still weighing on me because I've seen what my sister went through. She was battling lupus really bad. You know, at one point in time when she was when she was young and she had got diagnosed, they had gave her a month to live. And it was so hard, y'all. Like, seeing my sister go through um, all the poking, the hospital stays, everything, it was, it was very hurtful to watch her go through that. So it was really hurtful to watch um to watch my sister have to go through that type of um ordeal. So that's the only thing that played out in my head over and over again was I I don't want nobody want their child to ever have a disease. 
that they have to live with. You know, you don't want to. You want your kids to be as healthy as they can and thrive in this world and keep going. And so it really touched me when 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 the doctor said that. So after a while, I let it go. And I'm like, I don't think it's going to come out. I was like, I think it's just going to lay dormant. You know, I was really in denial about that it can come out. So, so we was approaching my daughter's um, 13th year. And it hits me again because, like I said, she was like eight when we found that out. So we was approaching her 13th birthday, and it just bust out on me like, okay, her birthday is coming. This may not come out. Lord, please, let it stay in. Like, I was really praying. So so then um, her 13th birthday came, and literally her cycle started. And I'm just looking at everything about her life. She got a sore. What's going on? How she looking? Like, okay, so the first month went through. I remember the date, the time, and everything when her cycle started. And so I was just like, just looking, looking. I didn't see nothing. So I said, okay, I think it's not going to come out. So the second month came, and the same. She was still playing. No sores or nothing. So I was like, okay, it ain't coming out. So... By the third month, third, fourth month, my sister came to me and she was like, Tay, look at Binky Cheeks. And I was like, what's wrong with her? She was like, I don't know. You need to take her to the doctor. And I looked at her cheeks and like all around here was so dark. It gave like the butterfly effect. If you don't know what the butterfly effect is, I try to put it in a picture. Let me see if I remember that. And so, um... I knew then when my sister said that where I was going to take her at to get treated. My sister had went to Children's Hospital, and some people don't believe that Children's is a good hospital, but they they was the ones who saved my sister. You know, like I said, she was she was given a month from them, and they did everything in their power to fix my sister, to heal her, and everything so she can thrive. So I knew where she was going. And so I called, I asked for them. They had moved across the street to the new children's center. And I called over there and I knew exactly who I was asking for. Cause like I said, they treated my sister from the moment she had lupus all the way up until she was like 19. So I called, I made an appointment. We went into the office. They was, um, they examined her body. They took blood work. You know, they did everything. We was there for a few hours. They came back. My daughter had HS. And at that moment, I think that I had prepared myself, but not prepared myself. So, um, by myself, once we got home, I did let some tears drop, you know, because I didn't want her to have to battle this condition. But she, but it was already here. It was nothing else that can be done. So, they put her on some um, heels. They put her on steroids. And all different type of stuff. Like, I, all the next thing I know, she had to have eye doctor's appointment because the pills that she take, it can mess with the eyes. So she had to go see a specialist eye doctor, not like just a regular eye doctor you go to get your eyes down and get glasses. No, she had to go to like a special eye doctor where they put this thing in there and they do like a whole eye thing, dilate the eyes. The test is long. So, so she had those appointments. She had regular schedule um doctor's appointments exams all the time everything so you know so then i had to get on the internet and i had to start learning you know because without learning what your kid have it, what did you take them to the doctor for then because you need to know yourself you got to know what is the do's and the don'ts so i had to get on there and start looking up stuff because the first thing I had learned was about her going to public pools. When you have HS, there's no more public no beaches. Pool. You know, you can put like your foot in there or whatever, but putting your body inside of the pools and things like that, you can't because of the bacteria. You have open sores. You know, some of the sores is really a scream. Like some of them can be big as a quarter, you know, and they will be very deep in the skin. So you have to be careful with that because when you have open sores in your skin, you use certain um, soap during that time to clean them. 
It's a pink soap. You can get it over the counter at Walmart, but usually her doctor prescribes it for her, and I don't have to pay for it. And um, you will have to get special bandages, depending on how big they is. Usually, um, my daughter doctor, they call in the wound care people, and they will have the uh, wound care people to deliver bandages to the house for her because there's only certain type of bandages you can use because you don't want a bandage to stick, stick to the sore to where when you pull it off, it's going to hurt. So they use, um, I forgot the name of it, but it's a bandage with like a shiny coat over it and you put it on there and it's easy to take right back off. So um, things like that. And I'm trying to think of like some other little things that I, let me get my iPad because I did put some of it in there. Okay, so let me get this out. Okay, so I already talked about the soap. And I will try to put all of the pictures in here about the little stuff that I'm saying, like the soap and stuff that you use. But regularly, she just use um, sensitive um, dove soap. And she doesn't use like Bath and Body Work, Victoria's Secret, or anything like that. She doesn't use those products. Um, she use uh, sensitive um, um, laundry detergent, since it's the regular dryer sheets without no scent to them and things like that. So that's covering like the soap and the laundry. Um, STD. So I hear a lot of people saying that HS is an STD. HS is far from an STD. It has nothing to do with HS. STD and HS is totally two different things. No, you do not get an a, a STD from HS. No, okay? HS is a sweat glands problem, and they believe that it comes from an overactive, um, a overactive of your immune system. It do not come from an STD. So, you don't have to worry about that, and you cannot catch HS from anyone at all, whatsoever. You can touch their sore, they can touch you, and you will never get HS from them. It is not transferred transmitted or whatever you want to say it does not go like that so therefore you can treat people who have hs and you will never get hs okay so we covered the std um pregnancy is not impossible but it's very dangerous and it's risky to get pregnant while having hs and it's really more risky if you're taking shots my daughter take Humana and methotrexate shots. And so with those type of shots, you cannot get pregnant. You will have to stop taking the shots. If you find out you're pregnant or you want to get pregnant, you have to stop them immediately. Um, there's no other option. You cannot take the shots and be pregnant. So you will put your health at risk to carry the child for the nine months. And hopefully you don't end up suffering bad from the consequences of carrying a child so yes that's another um problem right now my daughter don't want kids she ain't thinking about kids and i always talk to her about it and she's just like well i don't want no kids right now but i worry later on in life that she's going to meet someone and she's going to want to have kids and that hurts because it's like will she be able to have a healthy child you know will would she have to stop her medicine? And what would happen with her carrying the child? You know, I always worry about those things because if it's up to me and my child get pregnant and I would have to pick, it will always be my child first. I'm just saying. I, will, I love kids, but at the same time, I will have to pick my child. And that's just me. I don't know if other people would feel the same if they was given that option. But I know in my heart right away, if the hospital will call me and say that it's either my child or the baby, it's definitely my child. Because it, there's no other way for that. So, yeah. You know, I always think about those things like, you know, if she does, how would this work for her? You know, and everything like that. It's, and then people ask, is there um, permanent medicine? they switch her medicine a lot because your body get used to the medicine and once it get used to it and then it stopped working so they will have to end up switching her medicine so she started out with pills 
and it was working for a long time just the peel she wasn't having that many outbreaks or anything and then they stopped working so then they added on um, the methotrexate i will insert pictures of that as well and she was taking that again for a long time maybe like a year and then the story started coming back out again so then they moved her on humana and so she was taking those and she was taking these for a good while i want to say a long time like more than a year at first they wanted to see like because well, she take them for the six months and then they take away the shots within that six months she was still getting sores but not as many so they was like no we can't take her off so then they moved it up to a year and it was still the same so now they had a point to where they like okay neither one of the shots and the pills they working but not to the best of the how they should be working so now she's going to start infusion so tomorrow will be her first infusion it's a four hour um iv thing where they put an iv in your arm and they um give you medicine through there so it's for four hours so tomorrow will be her first time taking it which is tuesday i believe the 11th so uh, I will be with her. I'm going to try to record as much as I can to insert it in here so y'all can see. But, um, yeah, so she takes those. And I'm trying to think of some other little stuff. Okay, y'all, so the sores, like I was saying, can get to be, like, big as a quarter. Um, sometimes bigger, just depends on. And if they left untreated, um, they will leave bad scarring on the skin, which... Even if you do get them treated and they go away, like, they never fully go away. They leave scars. You know, some be thick like a, um, like a, um, I'm trying to think of the word, but I can't find it right now. Um, but they leave scars on your skin. Wherever they come from, they leave scars. Sometimes not in all spots, but in the boob area, they leave spots. Um, I can't speak for everybody. Everybody's body is different. So some scars is, is non-visible and some of them is really visible. And like I said, they come in like the weirdest spots, like in between the fat and your, um, on your side. Like if you got love handles, they come in between there. They come up under the arm in between the boobs, um, down in the private area and things like that. And so you can have track or non-track ones. The ones that's non-track, they usually like, is not that bad and then the ones that's track they is um open wide they drain them um pus and they going throughout the skin to somewhere else so those is trackers and then um they have a smell to them so a lot of so a lot of people use lumi my sister used lumi my daughter she never used it before she liked just her regular stuff so but if you um have those lumi is a really good product to use for that um because like i said that they do smell and it's not your fault it's not your it's not their fault at all you know they clean them but you can't help it because they drain so it's nothing you can do about that so um and if you don't like you have to keep them clean like this is not the t the condition that you want to have and you're not hygiene wise clean it's not because you can get a blood infection from this condition like you have to keep them clean because you can't get infections and most times some people get blood infections and that's very serious you end up in the hospital my daughter never got a blood infection and she have never got an infection because she keeps her body clean and she keeps her scars clean um so she keep the wounds clean so she never got an infection from I'm not saying that if you do get infection you not clean because like i said this condition is weird and it just does a lot of different things sorry y'all these kids is out here on motorbikes and all type of stuff but you know like i said it just depends on how you do want to be clean when you have this condition to keep from getting infections and things like that so if I think of anything else and then I will come back, but right now the sun's going down and I just wanted to come out here while I was getting some vitamin D from this long winter in Michigan and my little guy wanted to play. So if there was a lot of noise, I do apologize because like I said, it's, it's getting to be summer and these kids is out and about. So 
but if i do find anything else and then i will come back and talk about it but other to then i will uh continue tomorrow when i take my daughter to go get her first um infusion for her hs but if y'all have any comments, you know, y'all can leave them down in the comment section. And I will do a short video on answering questions if y'all have any other questions about um, stuff. But like I said, I will insert um, different things in here so y'all can see. Um, so y'all can also be aware, you know. And any, anything I said that y'all don't believe in, you can always look it up. It's always on the internet. So with that being said i will see y'all tomorrow okay y'all wrapped up my hair and then i thought of something okay so with hs i'm gonna put it in here too that it comes along with depression so if you know somebody who have um hs ms lupus or anything like that you know they have anxiety issues they have um depression so it's best when you know these things that you don't want to um bring them into anything that's going to make them have anxiety or depression my daughter i don't know really if she battling depression because she doesn't talk about it but she do have anxiety and me being her mother i always try to make sure that i calm i keep her calm and help her you know if it's any situation that's not life-threatening i don't bother my daughter with it you know because the doctors would tell you and your child, you know, you don't want to make them depressed. You don't want to give them anxiety. They already battling a condition that's life, um, that's that's a lifetime disease. So you don't want to keep um, making them depressing anything, you know. And as a parent, you have to listen to those things. And you have to put a lot of stuff on the back burner, you know, for your child's sake. You don't want your child to get into depression and have bad anxiety. You know, so I don't worry about a lot of stuff at all. You know, when it comes to my child, she is my number one priority. And if it's like I said, if it's not life threatening, I don't care. She's my kid. And I'm going to do anything I can to protect her. So, no, I don't, you know, um, get on her about certain things. Because, hey, listen here, if I can, if, if it's not, if it's not crazy or life threatening, then I let it be. And that's just how it is. Like, you got to know um, how to deal with cases like this. And if you're the type of parent that steady grilling your kid about everything, and then that's not healthy for them at all. My daughter, she goes through a lot of issues. She, she will be upset. You don't know why, but she going through it. You know, she will be angry sometimes and if she want to talk about it she will come i'll just be like they're going through something and i let it be and that's what you have to learn even though they 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 teenagers and kids teenager kids go through depression they go through things and you have and to you just got to know how to deal with it if they're not disrespecting you talking to you any kind of way hitting on you or anything like that and they doing stuff in a timely manner that they can do it or they to they self a lot or they not opening up about a lot of stuff. That's just them dealing with what they going through. And you have to know that. Like I said, I'm not making my daughter depressed over anything. You know, I let things be. I say less around her and everything. If it's an issue, I try not to let her hear about it or, or bring it to her because I know how her anxiety will get really high. And I know... You know, I don't know if she been depressed, but I do know when she, her anxiety had because she'll come and tell me certain stuff. And then I let her be because she will break down and cry. And it's only because she angry. And so, like I said, you just got to know how to deal with it and how to and when to know when to let stuff go. And that's just how it is. I'm not perfect at dealing with this, but I'm a parent that stay on the Internet and I'm learning and I'm and I'm listening to the doctors. When I go to the doctor, she laughs because she know I'm asking questions. She know that I'm going to tell the doctor about whatever's going on. And luckily I do because a lot of times the doctor have to redirect her and let her know too, like your mom was right, and this is this and that is that. So yeah, so just just be there. Like I said, whether they're adult or kid, if you know anybody that's battling MS, lupus hs and things like that reach out to them because those conditions is really serious and they is very life-threatening so whatever you can do to ease somebody or just be there for just to hear them out 
that's what you want to do for them because it is hard especially as being a kid dealing with it because adults dealing with it really struggle as well so imagine a teenager or a kid dealing with it okay so that's the end for now hey y'all this was the next day and we're on our way to the infusion clinic and it's located in downtown detroit downtown is really nice it's a lot of stuff to see so anytime you come to michigan don't forget to check out downtown detroit because it's really nice especially the waterfront um, if I make it down there this year, I'm going to record it and just show y'all how it looks and show y'all our neighbor, Canada. Okay, y'all, this was my daughter room. She was right across from the front desk just in case if she needed something or something went wrong and i was sitting next to the window in that nice comfortable chair and on this part she just um getting all the information she needs to start the infusions and everything and so now um the nurse is going to look for her uh, right vein so she can start the infusion which it wasn't that hard for her to find and um yeah so now y'all just going to see her inject my daughter with with the needle to do the infusion. She just had her Tylenol and her Benadryl for just in case if she get a fever or start itching. And so now we gotta wait for them to start their infusions. Okay, y'all, she was asleep during the whole process, which was good. She was asleep. Um, they did give us like this nice size bottle of apple juice, um, crackers that I showed in, one, in the other clip. And everybody up here is so nice, y'all. Like, they really nice, it's quiet. You can watch TV, but she don't watch TV, so we didn't watch TV, she just went right to sleep. But they was really nice and everything. So now we're just sitting and waiting for her hour to be up because she had to wait an hour after the medicine to make sure everything is okay with her. They gave her um, Tylenol for a fever just in case that she get a fever before they started the transfusion and they gave her Benadryl before just in case that she break out with a rash or anything. So they covered everything. So our hour is almost up and we'll be able to go home. It's now like almost one o'clock. And so yeah, we've been here since nine, like 8.30. So yeah, so I just wanted to update y'all. And so y'all, this will be the end of my vlog. If y'all like my video, don't forget to like and subscribe y'all and share it to other people who has HS. If y'all know anybody that's dealing with HS, Share this video so they can probably get some helpful tips or information or anything, you know, because we need to spread the word for HS, you know, because enough people, like, people not talking about it enough, and we need to get the word out there because people is giving false information and saying different things that's not true about it, and so that's why I wanted to make this video because my daughter is struggling with 
HSN is not right for people just to put out here and just saying things that's not right about it. And so that's why I'm doing it. But y'all, I want to thank y'all for watching and I'll see y'all in another video. Bye-bye.